Okay, what's up everybody? How have you guys been? I'm gonna call the homies real quick and then we're gonna, we're gonna... Let me explain. Today we are designing our own Apex Legends, okay? This is just an example. Yeah, today we are designing our own Apex Legends. Here's an example of what we're doing. Like, it can be whatever the heck you want it to be. And then you guys, the fans, can draw along if you guys feel like doing it. So yeah, so me, Moki Sniper, that punch kid, the game merchant, and of course my boy Boom Razzle are, have all come together. We all have these goofy, quirky designs, and it's going to be insane, guys. So get ready for it. Be hyped. I'm going to give him a fat call right now. Here it comes. Hello, Mo Hello, Moki. A very good day to you. Hello. Hello, punchy boy. Hello, Hello punch. I'm very, I'm very excited. So I have a, I have an example because I, I made, I made an original one. I was an example one to explain to like the chat and stuff, just to like how it's gonna go. It's Captain Falcon, so basically, just to, just to give you an idea. Of what, okay. But, but I will explain the details because I actually, when I started jokingly making this character design, it got kind of real. Where I was like, wait, this would actually be kind of sick. It seems like something Fortnite would actually do. Yeah, but we're not Fortnite, you know. We're not Fortnite. <sighs> So Captain Falcon is the first character I created, right? And obviously he's a real character, so Respawn wouldn't do it, but I thought it'd be kind of a cool idea for his passive to be, he can Falcon punch doors. So the doors don't take two hits. It would be like an instant, uh, mm -hmm. the doors would break oh, in, in mm -hmm. one punch. You would know, like if you're behind a door, you would know a Falcon oh, punch is coming because he, he would say it loud and proud. Um, so you can, you're not just going to be caught off guard. Um, and the other thing too, is that his punches were stronger on shields. So if he's punching you out with like, and you're, and you have shields, it does instead of like 30 damage, it does like disruptor, like 50 damage. Okay. Oh God. That's like his passive. Okay. His yeah. Tactical is the Falcon kick. Okay, so he can slide on the ground for like a quick yeah. burst of speed, or he can do kind of like a Doomfist meteor strike thing if he's in the air and like come down with his foot and like cause like a mini like explosion and radius and stuff. So that was like it's like a good movement ability and a good like damaging ability when you're like dropping in like with an mm. octane jump pad or like a zip line. Uh, and a last thing, which is like, like I thought it was a joke, but I thought this could actually be a cool idea for an actual legend in the future. Uh, his ultimate, he calls in his Blue Falcon, which is like uh, it's like a modified trident, so he can call in essentially like a trident to come in. Um, oh, that's sick. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so so that was sick. so like at, at first, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so like custom one with like, a, like yeah a with it yeah it's a blue one his is blue his is this is normally like blue yeah his this is normal his is ship that that comes in and stuff so that would be mm. like his ultimate and so as I was making this as a joke I was like this would actually this whole kit would work for like an actual character yeah, uh, yeah that's like, what, what I, was I dig it like so yeah that's my that was my initial one I had uh, as a joke as to explain to you guys what it's like and how you're presenting it obviously his backstory he's Captain Falcon from the F Zero franchise Wraith probably teleported him into the into the arena on accident or something in, in one of her wraith escapades and stuff but yeah that was just the first one that i was just going to show just to give you an idea it's, it's super easy to yeah. do people in chat are going to draw the other ones you guys have obviously because you know you guys don't have to draw captain falcon but some people will start drawing mm. stuff so let's get to punches first <laughs> let's start with you <laughs> let's talk about this <laughs> let me let me let me download this <laughs> explain it <laughs> description of the tactical <laughs> The uh, image of Scream, I just randomly found it on a stock website. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, okay, so this legend's called Abomination. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mix of every legend in the game. Uh, so every time there's a new edition, it gets bigger. Uh, <laughs> it's worse and worse. Uh, it can't can't walk, so it has to use the roll ability, which is the passive. So it rolls kind of like a uh, hamster ball in Overwatch, you know? <laughs> Uh, while it rolls around, uh, like, w when you hold down W, it plays the, uh, what's it called? The Katamari Dam exactly. Damacy yes. uh, song. Wait, wait, the, wait, which song? The one that goes, Katamari la, 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 la. <laughs> Okay, keep going. Uh, I'll, link, I'll link it. I love that it's Octane um, with Loba's boobs. Like, that, that's the only part of Loba that's it. there. I know, I love that that's the only part of Loba. Can I add, um, Brian on the Rocks? Oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, please. Oh, add the, ready for the developer who, bit guy here? Who, who had uh, a substantial role in design. I mean, Horizon. Uh, Brian's here. Brian's here now. Oh, hey, Brian, Hi. sorry. Did you did you miss the first one? Did you see the first one that we did? Oh, no, I've been watching. Okay, cool. So oh, here, yeah. we're on Abomination now. So the, you can give us your opinion at the end. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to be here and uh, absorb it all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Probably the health okay. is. Yeah. Uh, everyone's kind of just jumbled up. Okay. Uh, I like that. Okay. What's this? Cool team. Your health is. His. I guess this is kind of like a passive as well. Your health is constantly draining down because you're in pain. <laughs> <laughs> If you scream, you let out a scream of terror, which heals you, but also lets people nearby where you are. If you run over someone, they get added to the pool. <laughs> you get bigger, <laughs> literally, like the, the, the game, Kamar. And since they don't actually die, <laughs> they just get added to the pile and they have to watch everything for the rest of the game while screaming. <laughs> <laughs> this will progressively get harder for Abomination as the screams will notify nearby enemies. So the bigger you get, plus the screams, you're going to make a lot of noise. Yeah, it's it's really, it's going to get tougher and tougher to get more. Wow. 
that's it's top tier wow. legend. This, I really like yeah. the design of Abomination. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> I spent about five minutes. On it. <laughs> what's the yeah. what's the ultimate? Tell us what the ultimate. Uh, T bag ultimate is T bag. <laughs> Uh, it requires you to collect every legend. Got to catch them all. Uh, teabag, you teabag with such force you destroy the whole planet and explode. Since, <laughs> since everyone else technically loses, you technically win. So that's your end goal. That's great. I'm looking forward to season ten now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's definitely coming. So Brian, what are your what are your initial thoughts as a developer on on Abomination? Um, that's, that, that's, 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 for you. look I, i'm taking notes uh so you know we can uh we can go through everybody's legend and then i'm gonna drop some feedbacks and it, it'll be good <laughs> okay okay sounds good up next we have boom razzles <laughs> yeah legend, with, and, it, and it says legend name by the way yeah which is, i messed up on the photoshop i got yeah i tunneled a little bit so he, here's my legend uh it <laughs> says legend this? name but their name is candy roo <laughs> that's um, candy so pull up oh, my geez. notes <laughs> <laughs> so, Candy Roo, uh, um, so this, this is Candy Roo. So he, uh, the description is he's a YouTuber that was on his computer so much that too much of his consciousness got pulled into his computer. So that's like the lore. So now he controls his body with his consciousness that's stored in his body. So it's kind of like a reverse simulacrum. Wow. Um, he goes about his life upgrading his computer because <laughs> what he tells people is that he's like a quirky tech enthusiast, but actually he's making himself stronger as he upgrades his computer because his consciousness is on his computer. Uh. Uh, the passive is Loot Goblin. I didn't put the description below but basically he could pick up any item that he has a line of sight on wow uh, okay and, yeah so he has like a goblin range it's called <laughs> and he could just interact with like something that he could see from like 20 meters away do you see the logo for the passive punch <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, the, that's why i started laughing because i like, uh, made it bigger and i was like wait a minute <laughs> um and then his tactical uh this is kind of fun it's called replay buffer so i i didn't play overwatch but i, I imagine it probably resembles a little bit of tracer but like a YouTube video, he has like a 10 second lag time like behind him. But I think maybe how it's different than Tracer, I'm not sure you guys could tell me. He can rewind to like any point and it goes like kind of quickly. So he can he can like go one second backwards. So it's like a quick blink or he could go like to escape like full 10 seconds. So he kind of has control mm. of like how far he can rewind. You use it when you're dead. Um, maybe. And then his ultimate is glitch. This one is like a choose your own ultimate. Basically, the two glitches that Candy likes the most is the uh, trident pill jump pad one. So he can launch really high in the air or he can go under the map. So it's like you can kind of choose whichever helps you in and that you moment. And you choose so, or, or is it random? Ooh, I mean, random might be like a way that they nerf him down the road. But right now it'll be like you choose. Oh, course, so it'd be kind of cool to like go under the map so you can use it as a flank or as an escape. So I like how it's really? like okay. a little dynamic. So he can also yeet himself. But it's also selfish because he can't pull his team with him like Valkyrie's all. It's just like a solo yeet or under the map. It's for the content though. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. So glitch. <laughs> oh, what's his backstory? I, how, I, how did he get into Apex? <laughs> you should rename content. Oh, uh, <laughs> it, it could, because he wants to, you know, make his computer stronger. He uh, wants to use his prize money to uh, buy more water cooler. <laughs> <laughs> That's candy. And then moving on, this one is my more serious one. Okay, let's look at uh, that. And I, I didn't, I didn't think of like every little piece. Maybe you guys can help me with mimic name in progress similar to punch where it's a little bit horrifying mimic's face is just constantly like shape shifting between Ooh. every legend Ooh. i was inspired to make mimic because i've always thought it'd be really neat for an ltm where either you can stack like choose two characters abilities to just be part of your kit or an ltm where you can stack all legends on one team okay so mimic mimic's ability is meant for the team to communicate a lot more and also like plan out their abilities because mimic's passive is duplicate so they can create a second of something oh. so you found a purple light mag you can create another one but that has like a 60 Wait, second cooldown it. yeah so you can only do that like 10 times per game and maybe only you can't do that well, yeah, only 10 times you can create the best time so you'd have to nerf that yeah, accordingly have to nerf that one <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so there's duplicate, which obviously you just nerf and buff like according to what oh, feels good. So maybe you only do that a couple times a game. Uh, tactical is copycat. So this is kind of cool. This is where you need to coordinate your team well, because basically you get both of your teammates tacticals, but it's a really lame version. So you know how like Bangalore Smoke is kind of like three puff balls, like he only gets like one. Okay. Or like he only gets like one caustic trap or like kind of a, like a lame grapple. So it's like a, a weaker imitation of his teammates abilities. So like you can kind of stack like I was talking about like other abilities and then your ultimate is enhanced. It's not an ultimate that Mimic can use, but it's like a steroid version for one of his teammates. So if it's Gibby, 
it's like a ridiculous airstrike. If it's Pathfinder, it's like an enormous zip line. If it's Wraith, it's a huge portal. It's like you like imbue your teammate with like a ridiculous uh, ability. Of, like, so it's just building sized Wraith portals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be like a rift, you know, like Wraith would build like a whole rift. So but those are those are my so two it's legends. Like spooky ghost echo from Overwatch, the copycat thing. Yeah, right, it's right. A, it oh, yeah, is. I, yeah. yeah, it's kind of, I was going to say that, like, it reminds me of Echo from Overwatch, but I like the design of mm. it being like this spooky ghost yeah. thing. I like, like a specter that's kind of like a face stealer. What, what are the guns that, that they're holding? Am I seeing the world? <laughs> Am I seeing the world? Right, and also <laughs> another passive, yeah, like gu guns akimbo or whatever it's called. You know, dual oh, wield yeah. guns. I'm so glad that you chose the Spy Kids enhanced thing as the <laughs> as the <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was wondering what that was. It's it's oh, it's yeah, beautiful. It's, it's, it's uh, oh my it god. seems like yeah. something they need to play test the hell out of it. Yeah, it's it, 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 a nightmare. Have so many bugs. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna yeah. be the buggiest thing. People <laughs> still find thing. crazy shit. Okay, everybody. So uh, as you see, the next one that we have here. Oh, are you done? Are you done? I'm sorry. I didn't want to cut you I'm off. I'm done. No, that's me. Okay, so the good so good job, this? boom. Okay, so here's my here's my actual legend concept that I actually had. That's not as goofy as Captain Falcon, obviously. This is actually one that I I feel like I actually had like an idea of this before, but it's changed over time because of like the the way that the world has changed. So this character is named Midas. Obviously, you, if you know the story of Midas, like the mm. Greek god, he's like that Greek story, or is it Greek? Is it Greek? I think it's Greek. I don't know. It's basically like everything he touches turns to gold kind of like concept, right? Oh, so, oh okay. So I have this, he's, this is a terrible design. I want to, I, I feel like he looks really stupid here, like a pirate almost. Um, As you can see, he has his like a dead like fox, like, like a white fox like around his neck. Like he's just a rich dude. So I had like underneath Midas, it says like the richest man in the galaxy. So like his backstory is that he sold to the IMC like a bunch of different weapons, like deals and stuff. So like he's like a weapon manufacturer type, like tycoon. Um, But he like also sold to like both sides. He sold to to like both the IMC and the militia like he's just the guy that like made like the manufacturing codes like like he owns like a lot of like that side of things so that's why he's so rich cool. and essentially like he's just joining because he's just bored and rich and just wants to like prove that he can do it like money can buy wins the thing that I really like about him was that like, I had an idea of a concept about this legend for a while before crafting materials became a thing but now that crafting materials be became a thing it makes it kind of like an added idea. I added upon that, okay? So his passive is that he passively gains crafting materials and gains materials from kills. So essentially, like, if uh, he just over time will gain, like, five crafting material just, like, every, like, let's say, like, 30 seconds or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then, or maybe, maybe quicker than that. Um, and every time he gets a kill, he gets, like, an extra 100 crafting material. And the cool part about this, like, his kit is that it's very much surrounded by, like, this crafting material, like, mechanic and stuff. Because uh, it allows for him to buy things, like, in, like, the, uh, in the crafter easily. He can buy, like, whatever the hell's in the crafter on the spot. But his tactical, he can essentially on the spot trade crafting materials for like ammo. So he like mm -hmm. the moment, the, whenever he feels like it, he can just be like, okay, like 10 crafting, here's some ammo. Like he can get ammo like nonstop throughout the match. So he's going to be like, be like, he's kind of like Loba in the sense that you can get ammo whenever, but only for the ammo type that he like he has and stuff. Or maybe I can make it so like he can get whatever ammo he wants. He's just buying it. Like he, like a little mm -hmm. screen pops up and he buys it with his crafting material. And then the other concept is the is that he can trade cells for batteries and syringes for medkits. So he can essentially... Like you can transfer one cell and like use this tactical to transfer it into like a like a battery. It's yeah, so cool. and it uses some crafting material to do that. But so it's like so you can do it as many times as you want, but like your crafting material goes away. He has like no real cooldown. His cooldown is purely how long it takes for him to get crafting material. And so you, if you land on like a crafting area, it's like insanely like strong. My theory was that he he'd whip it out of his coat, kind of like oh, a well, sleazy come. merchant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so he like mm -hmm. he would like yeah. pull it out. Like it'd be really funny. So that's like his tactical. Is where he's very much a support character in the sense that he can consistently get your team like the things that they need. And his ultimate is called the pawn shop. Uh, so he essentially opens up a, a, like a shop, kind of like Loba, but more like an actual like pop up shop. How about and, it just opens up his coat. Yeah, he opens <laughs> up his coat. Yeah, exactly. that, that'd be yeah. even better. He opens up his <laughs> coat, really and, awesome. and it, like your team can essentially pick stuff from like his coat um That's actually perfect, so yeah. it wouldn't be like picking stuff at random they literally upgrade whatever they have so if you have a alternator you can literally turn that alternator into a gold alternator so it has gold everything or you have like a you have an armor you can swap yeah. your armor to up like you basically just always upgrade something your team all guarantees upgrade something on the spot and his pawn shop thing the way I, the mechanic i had for it is that his ultimate is one of those things that uh is either on a cooldown or i can make it so that you can also buy the pawn shop like with your crafting materials so you have like an excessive amount of crafting you can just activate it 
by buying it earlier. Or maybe it's purely yeah. crafting. So like the only way to ever activate it is by using crafting. Everything's just crafting material based. It's never cooldown based. Um, and ultimate accelerants would probably just give him like a hundred crafting material or something like on the spot. So yeah, like that's that's basically him. So he's just this guy, the support character that just gives out a bunch of stuff. He's sleazy looking. He's got a gold tooth. He got the gold chain. He got the earring. His right hand is a golden metal hand. Like it's like a robotic uh, golden. That's for the thing. passive, I've always thought that they should have that as passive for everyone. Yeah. So like you get a certain amount of materials per kill. It'd be really cool. I yeah. Think. Or and like it... for the team at least. Ooh. Or maybe him specifically gets more materials than others would. Maybe he can have, because we have mm. legends that have multiple passives now or passive with multiple abilities. What if his passive is also that he can share crafting with his teammate? Oh, yeah. Like he yeah. only gains it. My teammate is currently at the crafting station, but I'm holding an angle somewhere else and I can send all my crafting to them or share it a bit. Like a digital yeah, transfer. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, because yeah, he's so rich. He's just so he rich, you know? So <laughs> pissed at him when he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it always makes a cha-ching sound when he shares it. to me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You suck. <laughs> 100%, 100%, dude. A very thorough concept yeah well, that's that's, well that's mine so that's my idea i uh, hope you guys enjoyed that obviously captain falcon is I the like one that i am actually more hyped about stuff <laughs> 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 okay so up next we have the gaming merchants uh legend concept called chain L please merchant right. you have the floor so yeah i didn't steal your passive i swear <laughs> <laughs> so this <laughs> is a once infamous pirate and a space pirate um but you know he retired. Uh, he's run out of money, so he's come into the games to get himself a bit more money. He's kind of let himself go a bit, so the only things he's got to use are the trinkets that he's kind of kept onto. So his first passive is Fool's Gold, which is a spyglass. He can zoom in and he can see player outlines and healing items because, you know, Loba needs her passive as well. So we got that. <laughs> and then the tactical is like, I want to create a character where you can kind of plan out an area and then, you know, you know what's going on. So you can you fire a dart and it puts a camera wherever it lands and you can then at any point access that camera kind of rotate the angles but you can't move it it's not like crypto's drone so it's kind of static there mm -hmm. until it's destroyed but the interesting thing you could fire it on another player an enemy and yeah. it's like the enemy team's only going to be notified when you view through that camera so you can kind of say all right i'm going to track this squad i'm going to shoot a dart at them later on i'm going to see what they're doing maybe they're kind of chilling somewhere Codex, you know, thank you we for need the to plan. get some kills and you know that's when you want to kind of jump on them. Will and you be able to see an icon of that on the Codex, minimap? For the there right. won't be an icon for the camera, but there will be like a little red flashing dot. And if Chain is viewing through the camera, then if you pick up an enemy in your camera angle at that time, then it will notify that player. So it's like a Bloodhound scan, but only oh. whilst he's like actively mm. viewing through it. So it's kind of like when he's not viewing for it, it's still there, but just deactivated. Wow, like, 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 a, like a really good spotter, like if, you're, if you have like a sniper yeah, teammate. Yeah. Wow, that's sick. And then his ultimate, I wanted to try and make an ability that sort of like calm things down a bit because there's so many movement abilities now. So what it does is he throws this weird chain ball he's got attached to his arm and in a 100 meter radius around the bomb, all movement abilities are disabled until the bomb is destroyed. So like any grapples, any stims, anything that's going to, you know, allow people to escape is just completely disabled. So it allows people to just focus on fighting. You know, people aren't going to get away with any sneaky disengages or anything until the bomb is destroyed. Basically an octane counter for rank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> a Valk counter. It's like, it's like you try to Valk away. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I like that he's a pirate. So what's his backstory? Oh, so your backstory is that he's a so once... So he like was... A... Yeah. He was once like... Think of like Blackbeard levels of infamy. But he mysteriously disappeared. And he comes back later and it turns out he wasn't really doing anything. He was kind of just sitting on a beach somewhere. And, you know, he's run out of gold. He's run out of money. He's got he's got no Apex coins left. So he's joined the games to try and build a name for himself, get some more money so he can go back to his retirement home, basically. Wow, wow, wow. That's freaking awesome, man. How does he hold uh, weapons besides pistols? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's, got, he's got quite and a strong teeth. hand, you know? Pretty big You'd have hand. awesome animations. <laughs> You'd have amazing animations just... I mean, look at that beefy arm. Like, it's pretty strong. I love this one, Merchant. This is sick. My chat's, my chat's like saying this is an awesome design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the chain bomb, dude. It's sick. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very unique. unique. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we got Moki Snipers. It's pronounced <laughs> Fox? 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 Yeah. Fox? It's, like it's Fox? German for, for Fox. I feel like you do this on purpose, though. The name. The name. Okay, so uh, please, lay it on us. Lay it oh, on us. Oh, I just realized that when you switch the... <laughs> 
Oh, you're a liar. He's such a liar, dude. Go ahead, lay it on us. Uh, lay it on us. Okay. Um. So Fox is <clears throat> also German, like Richter from Titanfall 2. I just went the lazy route and made him a German character. <laughs> and in my imagination, he visited the same military school as Richter, but there's like no further connection. But that's sort of his introduction into the world of Titanfall and Apex. And then because he knows Richter, he later learns that Valkyrie joined the games as the daughter of Viper. And that's sort of his initial initiation of when he thinks, oh, maybe that's something I want to do and I could do. And then his whole kit is basically movement. Y you know me. I, I, I had <laughs> we had him expecting nothing had less. Then. <laughs> yeah, he's about to be. <laughs> It starts with his passive swift slide, which would be either no slide delay or a very tiny slide delay. And he's also borrowing from Fortified that he isn't being slowed down by bullets. So all the movement tech of wall bouncing and tap strafing and dead slides you have would all be easier. I was thinking of it like how Horizon feels better when moving around and she just feels a bit more nimble thanks to her passive. And yeah. His passive would fill a similar role. Corvus, thank you for the prime. And then also work really nicely with his tactical dash. It's basically like a tracer dash or a jet dash from Valorant. Wow. Oh, that's so good. That, wait, how, uh, nice. real, real quick, wait. What's the cooldown for this for the dash, and how many do you have? Like, do you have like multiple? Let, yeah, let me let me explain. I'll go ahead. Sorry. Dash <laughs> would would work in all directions based on your movement input and your view input. So if you, for example, look down and hold S, you get shot in the air. You're not limited to the two-dimensional plane of the floor around you. Like combining WASD combined with your view input lets you basically shoot in every direction you want to. I would think that it needs a bit of a cast animation or animation delay like how Loba or Wraith's tactical currently works. And I don't think it would be that far. Like only three, four, five meters, like mm -hmm. a tracer or jet dash. But then the very interesting thing is that you can either hold for one dash, which you keep your momentum from the dash, or you click it and get two dashes that you can chain together. Okay, I like Holy that. I, man, this is so well thought out. It's amazing. Like, it's incredible. <laughs> oh my God, so, yeah, it's amazing. And then we have his ultimate. I was worried about making a movement legend that was only self-centered. Mm. So as I was thinking for a very long time how to make give him an ultimate that was team focused but also somehow movement focused. And then I came up with dash core, which description overcharge your dash and leave behind a tunnel for your team to use. I would think that activating dash core instantly gives you between three to five dashes that you can chain together. And where you start, you start basically a wraith portal. And then when you finish your dash core, you place the wraith portal in quotes. I imagine it more like a tunnel than an actual portal entry and finisher. So then you can either use all your dashes, let's say it's four dash four times and then it gets placed automatically or place it in between wherever you want, like how you can place wraith portal before uh, it's finished. You can only use it in one direction and it stays open for 20 seconds or disappears after all your teammates have used it. Mm. Because I was thinking about how would it be different than a portal or a jump pad? What kind of function fulfills it in between those? And it's basically like a jump pad that your team can use without getting shot at, but only in one direction. So it doesn't replace Wraith's portal. And can, enemies can can't. Can enemies get inside? No, enemies can't. Enemies can, can join it in those 20 seconds where it's cast or until your last teammate has used it and it closes. In between that time, everyone can use it. So, so, I would imagine like that. So Moki, I, I, this concept is, is so cool. I was thinking like when I, when I saw first dash core, a part of me just thought like, it's almost like you're, looks like he looks like he has like a mechanical like fit. Like his whole, his whole thing's very technological and stuff. It's almost mm -hmm. like he's like overcharging his dash. In my head, I, I thought it'd be kind of cool if like he could go through walls, like he can create the tunnel. If he charges it, he could potentially like, you know, any- I'm not sure about that because I'm imagining it when you are in a building. Ah. I'm, I'm thinking of those end circles mm. in high tier competitive games where there's five teams alive, you're sitting in a corner, can't peek anywhere, 
because you have angles on you. And then you just dash into the building, outside the building, dash up one story into the next spot and reposition oh, yeah, your team really up. quickly. Yeah, you can dash <laughs> in every direction. If you take the tunnel, people can shoot you through the tunnel because it's not like rates. We're like, it's more like not just while being... you're No, not while you're in the tunnel, but while Fuchs is casting the tunnel, you can get shot. Okay. Okay, it's pretty cool. I like that the balance. Sense. Yo, this is, uh, this is fucking cool, dude. Been okay. been, uh, <laughs> thinking about this stuff for a while. It's really, really cool. Really well but thought out. I love it. What's, I'm the, um, what's the story between the, on the model itself? Did you make that? Yeah. How'd you? Oh, that—that that? That is the uh, sonar pulse blade pilot from Titanfall, where I just removed the helmet. Ah, oh, I see. Sick. And then looks sick. Yeah, I like this a lot, Moki. This is awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Brian, Brian said, so Brian's watched all of ours. Uh, obviously, even Bunch was like, "Don't, don't worry about his." But nah, I want you, I want to hear what you have to say about his. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, from beginning on, uh, laid on us, yeah. laid on us, Brad guy. Which was the first yeah, one totally. we were talking okay. about? Um, by the way, like yeah, Bird's Eye. I, um, this is awesome. You guys are hilarious, and I'm really happy you kind of like busted this out. Thank you, Brian. Captain Thank you for being Falcon. here, Brian. Oh, Captain Falcon, let's oh, go. Hey. Oh. <laughs> a lot of fun. So let's imagine this is more like Commander bird guy um and let's just say <laughs> my initial take is like with the passive and the tactical the main thing that we're really talking about is melee and even boom and i were chatting about this like last week or, or whatever we mm -hmm. were we're chatting about like melee is in this weird place where there's like an auto snap and it does a good amount of damage and there's you know and it pushes people out so if you have something that is melee focused it's always going to be really challenging because the number one thing that pisses people off in fps games is getting melee to death mm -hmm. it's it's just like imagine imagine getting punched to death by this just like for a second, like the, rage, yeah. the rage is instant. You're just like, this is a, a all about shooting and angles and positioning. And this guy just ran up and punched me. Like, it's like, no, thank you. Just, you know, the crashing in the air is kind of interesting, but it's basically like asking, hey, uh, I would like a whole team to turn around and shoot me at the same time. So, <laughs> so, so it's really risky, but that's that, that might be okay. But the slide across the ground is basically like, moving melee which is scary to me i think the coolest part about the kit is the summon a triton uh trident because it's just like let's do a redeploy for x seconds um even though there's no tridents like in the map yeah i think that that's pretty sick it might break everything in the universe but i'm not going to worry about balance right now um <laughs> nah, 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 nah. uh all right uh what uh, we got next? So up, ne up next is the bom abomination <laughs> i love it okay so <laughs> no nah, no nah, skip this <laughs> i'll just say that uh it made me laugh uh, <laughs> and I think I, I think that this is something really like this character is actually just like some weird Halloween cursed LTM. Do you know what I mean? Like this is yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. one boss, person plays like, abomination. Like, oh, the, that'd be so the funny. <laughs> take it down. It's got like this big health bar as soon as you start the match. Yeah, it's it's fifty nine against one. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you actually got something out of that, which is so awesome. Uh, the next legend was uh, legend name, aka Candy. It's Candy Roo. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So first of all, the art is amazing. Thank you. For that. <laughs> I just didn't expect to see that this morning. So this is good. Um, so I think Luke Goblin, like thematically, this is hilarious. But Luke Goblin is, a, is an interesting passive. It kind of stomps on Loba a little bit. There's ways to potentially restrict it in a kind of interesting way. But the weird thing about it, the same thing with the play pattern, is the passive doesn't really support the other two abilities, right? Yes. So yeah. Maybe just like Candy is very confused. Uh, but um, <laughs> love Candy, I know he's in chat. I know he's in chat. But. No, but that's true. It's like it's disjointed. So even like, yeah, like thematic. That's something that I need to think about is like coherence. <laughs> yeah. So he's confused. He's confused. So, oh. he's confused. <laughs> Coherence, I like um, so glitch and the rewind in in the same exact way. If you have hard to read uh, movement abilities, they're just hard to counter. So if yeah. you had glitch where it's like it's Maze uh, iceberg thing where she turns herself. Not Evan, thank you for five months. Uh, icicle, uh, right? You haven't played Overwatch, but basically she's invincible. She can just turn it on and turn it off again. Yeah. Mm. Where it's like I'm invincible, but I'm an ice cube, so I can't do anything. I can't you know move anywhere. I'm just here, and you kind of have to like play around me or, or understand that mm. I could pop out of this at any second that's kind of interesting so glitch could be something like that where it's like yeah i'm a big weird glitch of a mess you can't shoot me you can't do anything to me um but mm. i can't move and i can't do anything mm. and then i'm gonna pop out whenever i feel is correct and that to me is a little that's more readable but still difficult in apex you have to have an opportunity to counter like that's yeah. the main thing on all these legends mm. is if you can't counter it it's not good like it could be fun you know for for a short time for the player but it's not gonna mm. be fun for anyone else 
facing this legend. Wow, so, that's a good idea. I didn't understand. Like, like I was like, I always thought, like, why couldn't you do that? But that makes so much sense. Like, why? Yeah, you yeah I appreciate design around that, that insight. So that's cool. I mean, I, otherwise, uh, Candy's. That's pretty fun. It's pretty pretty cool little character. Um, uh, next <laughs> next up is uh, Boom's uh, other so, uh, yeah, mimic. Yeah, this was probably a, a nightmare. I think um, the the passive is actually probably the easiest one to uh, work with because Lifeline already has a care package that does like auto upgrades, right? Mm -hmm. So that I don't mind. I think that's kind of cool. Um, as like mimic and the name, I think playing off of that passive is kind of cool. Definitely the the copycat weaker imitation is probably the the weakest part of the kit because it's like, well, why would I ever want my cue like the thing that i use every 30 seconds to be a weaker version of another legend when i could just pick another legend and have the full mm -hmm. effect so anyway i, I think he's super neat. i think he's a super cool character but same problem as you know it, it's yeah. hard to hard to fight against you know everyone's I mean? op it's like a, it's yeah. boom boom it sounds like it's boom you make unbalanced legends boom yeah. <laughs> and next up is my is my legend midas oh, uh, okay. the richest man in the oh, galaxy this guy looks like macklemore and made me laugh um, <laughs> oh yeah that's what it'd be this is his design should just be macklemore honestly yeah, the ultimate is called thrift shop they're done that would have um, been okay <laughs> So uh, I think as a cohesive, you guys, once again, we're talking about it as a cohesive idea. This is fantastic. Like everything around crafting is super cool. The main thing I will say is generating crafting materials is going to be problematic. Think about it this way, right? What is the purpose of crafting? It's to get players to move around the map. But most of the time, it's actually to mm. keep players in an area longer because mm. you're sitting there and you're crafting. And because people can see it from a certain distance, it's actually to be a player beacon, right? So it's to prevent the match from getting stale. And so what happens is if you're able to not move and just gain resources, there is a severe risk of camping and getting free resources. And that's what this character is. Like the purpose of looting is to get people to move around and to make the fights not stale. And then on top of that, you would be able to like sit down and go, well, I don't need to carry any materials, uh, sorry, uh, healing stuff because I got all these materials and I can just fill up with ammo and grenades and so you're removing a decision point yeah, for the player to be like, how much do I carry in my inventory? If you were to balance this properly, it would not be impactful enough. Do you know what I mean? It would have to be really good for it to be worth it to play a character that doesn't have any movement or combat utility or like even a smoke grenade is more useful in a, in a big fight, right? So it's like, how do we how do we put it all together? So I think the idea of like gaining awesome. crafting materials from kills is probably the one that I would keep. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, like, so, so it's not as campy. So the only way for him to get like, so theoretically, like you can obviously find crafting material in the, in the map, but yeah. the the way he's really going to get value is by getting kills. And then yeah. after he gets a kill or two, boom, you got like amazing loot like on the spot. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. maybe you can have like, like the only way to get materials to begin with is from the, the canister things. And mm -hmm. then this is the only character that can see them in death boxes and pick them up. Oh, like that. I've always wondered that. That'd be cool. Kill based. Oh, that, yeah, that, like that, that yeah. In, an item. That'd, yeah, be, that'd, be, that'd be sick. Cool. Look at us being devs. See, <laughs> so then, so what I mean, is like, th this is how a lot of conversations go, right? People pitch ideas and then we just riff till we find something that's worth prototyping. So like, you know, obviously we can't make any of these. You know, whatever, yeah, of but course. It, it's, but it's, but it's, it's cool. It's cool that you, you know, for me, for me, what I like about it is that, you know, you guys are passionate enough to go and, and do this stuff and make this stuff. So it's, it's just super cool. A little, little bit of high fives to you guys. I'm actually glad you're here. Cause like in our heads, our characters aren't that unbroken. Like there's nothing wrong with them. But then I like that you're poking holes at like some of the mechanics that it would cause oh, yeah. or some yeah. like the decisions that would change the game. Like I didn't even think about the campiness mm -hmm. of this character, but you're so right. Like if you're passively gaining crafting material and everything's based on crafting, why leave? Why yeah. even fight? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Love I would love the feedback. Okay, next up we have our boy gaming merchants, Chain. Hey. Chain. I kind of, I, did I dig Chain? I dig Chain a lot I too. Just, I think Chain yeah, is, is wild. So this is kind of the the um, the same kind of thing where the character does feel a bit split. I do understand kind of the the idea behind like Chain Bomb being like the key thing you want to do in an area to like calm down fights. I think the calm the f down area makes sense. We we've tried a bunch of stuff that's like here are no fun areas. And that's the way to think about it, because if you can't use your abilities, it's no fun. And so with Revenant, the trade off is, you know, he has a couple of charges and he has to be very specific. But mm -hmm. if it's just like I place this down in the ground and all y'all are screwed, it'll frustrate players beyond what you think is rational. Right. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's that's a dev statement for sure. It's like we, we just have to be really careful with how much we take away from a player. Right. And so I think it's interesting, but it could definitely use some work to be like, well, how else could we possibly calm 
calm people down. I don't have an answer, but it's like, it's a good goal. If Chain's play pattern was, I would like to enter a combat space and make sure that anyone in this combat space is fighting like exclusively with guns for a short amount of time, cool, right? But I don't know if taking away the abilities is the right answer. Is there a way to positively motivate that? I, I don't know. I've never like played with that, mm. but it's 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 something to think about for sure. So the spyglass and the tack are like super recon. And this is why I said it's like- Yeah, so a, split a, for sure. A little split, right? Because one's like, I'm here to come in the door and tell you all to shut up <laughs> and, uh, and I'm gonna fight you. And that's cool, but everything else is about, I want to be far away from you and I want to kind of hide and make sure that I can tell my teammates, okay, well, that guy over there has this kind of shield and this guy over here has this kind of stuff going on. And that's cool. I really like Spyglass as like a core recon like mm. ability, right? The Splinter Cell dart is sick. Um, <laughs> the thing that I like about yours in general is like it sticks to people and it's kind of hard to see, I would imagine. But the instant that you get scanned, we'll have to tell you how and why you got scanned. And so someone, like if you're playing nearby a team, you know, they're just gonna run up and melee you and <laughs> everyone's just gonna <laughs> melee each other and knock off the dart. But I think it's kind of neat. But yeah, it, together as a legend, I, there's definitely a little split, but overall a really, really dope character um, in the way that I really like the recon spin. And I love Splinter Cell Dart. I love that game. <laughs> nice. I love that game. So uh, last but not least is of course, uh, Moki Sniper is designed for, how do you pronounce it again, Moki? I don't want to say Oops. a bad word. Oh. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so like honestly, like straight up, I love this legend um for a lot of reasons, but the immediate like obviously the the style and you know you, you pulled the, the pose and everything is it's amazing stuff. I think the feedback is from what we were talking about right at the very beginning, which is readability. And I know there are ways to balance it. It's the same kind of feedback where if it's balanced too far backwards, it's not really usable. Like my biggest thing with dashing in any direction is incredible because it's so overpowered in Apex. This is the kind of thing when I remember we first joined the team, we were talking to some of the guys who worked on TF2 and were working on the Legends at the time. And they were like, we want to solve this Brownian motion problem. And if you've never heard of that, it's just like where particles are just spinning around each other all the time and there's no like front line. And that's what you had with Titanfall because everyone had grapples wall runs, double jumps. Mm -hmm. It was a really hard game to, especially at the higher skill levels, read what was going on and not feel like you're just getting shot in the back every five seconds. And when you have a character like with dashes, even if it's like short dashes, that's just enough for me to miss a clip and you to absolutely obliterate me. It's, it's like this character's must pick. It is like the ultimate oh, yeah, positioner, <laughs> the ultimate uh, <laughs> combat character, the ultimate in uh, movement and sliding, like everything about this character is like, oh my God, so good. And the way that I, I think about it is, I like to think about it on a hundred point scale. If you look at your abilities, and I like to say like with Bangalore, you know, like her passive is like 20 out of a hundred. And the ultimate is also probably 20 out of a hundred. And then you have her tactical, which is in my opinion, the 60. So that adds up to a hundred. And you're like, cool, this is a balanced legend right this character is 80 to 90 on each one <laughs> like i had ideas how to balance it because horizon on release was the same yeah what i was thinking is what if you have things like cast animations you can't pull mm. out your weapon while dashing you have delay of pulling out your weapon after you have dashed showing where you dashed with wraith like trail or Ooh. with a loba like trail yeah mm. so I, I, I agree. And this is kind of the tricky part is this is why I think this character is like good and scary. But like, imagine you're this character, right? And you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to use my dashes and I'm going to think I'm going to keep using the average player as like the baseline, right? Because, you know, the majority of our players are not top tier. So what they're going to do is they're going to be like, I'm going to dash and this is going to be really cool. But then we've added all these balances where it's like, well, now you see where I'm going to be before I get there. So you're already shooting, you're pre-firing and that and I'm dead anyway. Why bother dashing? It's like, okay. So what we're telling the players, don't do this in combat. So then why even bother having like a dash? You could just make it like a, a double jump, but with a dash you're going from point a to point b real fast it's always tricky like dashes in apex are always tricky and oh, i think so um, cool though <laughs> and and that's why it's like i know it's so cool but it's it to me it's so powerful i would the first thing i would do is dash behind someone automatically turn around before they can even realize and then shoot them and so that's what that's literally this character is i do the titanfall 2 problem where i double jump just above you you don't know where i am and then either i shoot straight down or I land on a side you're not expecting and instantly murder you. So mm -hmm. I think that there is a lot of really interesting pieces here that we could absolutely balance. And so I'm not even saying like, let's, you know, this legend is 
purely overpowered. I'm just saying this character is scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and it would require a, a bunch of a bunch of work to playtest and get right. If you think about it, like what's it like to fight this character is probably the best way mm. to think about a balanced design from the outset. So yeah. anyway, all these are fantastic. Uh, I don't know <laughs> hey, no, Brian, yeah, thank, but, but, thank like, you so much for being be, for being here. Yeah, we, dude, your feedback is just hanging out. Along. We didn't expect you to come to like this morning, and like I'm just yeah, I'm getting deaf feedback even for some of our goofier designs is is awesome. There's just it's nice to it's also good it's also cool to hear like some behind the scenes thought process of like oh, what you guys think about when you when you're designing legends and stuff but yeah thank you so much and thank you to all you guys for showing up i know this is like, kind of like a random idea but i just knew it'd be just a fun time with you guys to just, yeah, just see what you guys fun. came up with that was, that was awesome <laughs> uh, this was super fun thanks thanks for having us macro <laughs>